What's up everybody, Major Retired Richard Ojeda here, and you are watching Ojeda Live. Countdown achieved. It's time for Ojeda Live. What's going on, everybody? Uh, once again, as always, I want to uh, appreciate uh, each and every one of you guys who are willing to hop on here and spend uh, about a half an hour with me. It means a lot. Uh, okay, let me see if I get my phone going. It's not showing. Okay, here we go. Let me hit the play button here so I can get that open. Now, Anna, let me uh, turn my phone all the way down. Anna, what I want you to do also is, uh, while you're looking at the chats, if you see people from other countries, kind of jot their names down so we can make sure we highlight those those guys. Uh, okay, folks, let's go ahead and just jump right in because I got some stuff, and, and we'll have a good conversation about this. Uh, a judge rules that Donald Trump's stand back and stand by is admissible, relevant evidence in the Proud Boys trial. So uh, I I've said this before. You know, this isn't just Enrique Tario. There's a lot of these guys that are going to basically be held accountable for what they did on January the 6th. Uh, and, and I'm going to tell you that the majority of them are absolutely wanting to say, you know, we, we were told. Uh, and, and, and that's a pretty good, uh, what is it, a defense. Uh, I mean, if they have any defense at all, that's that's probably the best one. Uh, District Judge Timothy Kelly said that the former president's comments showed an additional motive to advocate for Mr. Trump and engage in the charged conspiracy to keep Donald Trump in power. Uh, and make no mistake about it, you know, there is plenty of interviews that have taken place that absolutely when Donald Trump said stand back and stand by. I mean, they ate that up. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are phone messages now that are are basically out that show exactly how they felt. And they were like, let's do it. They're, we're, we're pumped. So they knew. During a presidential debate in 2020, Trump was asked by moderator Chris Wallop if he would condemn white supremacists and militia groups. Democratic candidate Joe Biden interjected and specifically meant the Proud Boys. Trump responded with Proud Boys, stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what, somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left because this is not a right wing problem. This was the stuff that these people were just eating up. You know, it basically validated them in their minds. You know, they felt that, you know, all of a sudden these militias, now we're going to be front and center. And, and that's what happened. Uh, the comment, according to prosecutors and members of the Proud Boys who testified publicly to the House Select Committee investigating January 6th, was celebrated by the far right group and was used as a recruiting tool. And uh, I mean, I will tell you, I guarantee you the Proud Boys numbers probably doubled, maybe even tripled after Donald Trump said what he said. Remember that right after Trump said that, Enrique Tario, the leader of the Proud Boys, tweeted, standing by, sir. They knew it. They knew it. What this means is prosecutors will use this to show Trump lit the match, and Tario's defense will be that he was doing what the president asked of him. So, I mean, we're still going to see what's going to happen. Uh, I believe that uh, Elmer Fudd Rhodes and Enrique Tario are going to get pretty much the same sentences. They're going to get convicted of the same crimes uh, and they're going to go down and, and understand that every single proud boy that basically crossed into the capital of, of the United States on January the 6th, it's all going to be the same thing. Uh, you know, they're going to claim that they were just doing as they were told by the president of the United States. Uh, it's not going to go as well as they think. I, I believe that Tario and, and Rhodes are going to do more than a decade behind bars. And as far as I'm concerned, I am completely fine with that. Uh, what do you think, Anna? I think that, um, 
I specifically remember when that uh, debate happened and he said that. Uh, I think a lot of people were shocked when he was like, stand back and stand by because it it's deliberate. He always like makes up some excuse, but. He's being yeah, like, like he didn't have, I mean, you were given the opportunity to denounce white supremacy mm -hmm. and he couldn't do that. Yes. And, and, right. and ladies and gentlemen, you know, there are all, there's already stuff out right now that, you know, there was like a private gathering of Mar-a-Lago not too long ago where literally it was just a bunch of white supremacists. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump threw a little event, you know, and, and, and they tried to keep it secret, but you can't keep things like that secret. Uh, th there's people that are working at Mar-a-Lago that absolutely are, are, are letting people know what the hell's going on. Uh, and that's just the way that it is. But Donald Trump, you know, you, you, we, we could go back in, in Donald Trump's history. I mean, everybody knows when, when, what is it, it was called the, the, there's five young men, at, you know, black men that were basically facing charges that were going to put them away for, for life. They were found to be innocent, but Donald Trump still took a full page after they were found innocent trying to target them. The you know, Central we Park know that five? Donald Trump. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's mm -hmm. it. The Central Park Five. Uh, we know that Donald Trump was angered when he found that there were construction workers working in the lobby of the Trump Towers that were black because he didn't want all of those people seeing black people do construction work on his building. I mean, we know he's a racist. And if you don't know he's a racist, then you're just not that smart. And we know that there's a lot of these people that go to his rallies, you know, blacks for Trump. Uh, they're just not that smart, uh, you know, or, or, or they're monetizing it, you know, the diamond and silk. And I got it, you know, uh, uh, may she rest in peace. Uh, but make no mistake about it, they become, uh, you know, uh, 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 what is it, popular because of what they did, because of how they stood. And they knew that if they stood the way they stood and supported Donald Trump, they would get all kinds of support from the far right, and that would equate to money. And that's exactly what it did. The Hodge, the Hodge twins, I think that's what they're called, same thing. You know, th there's a lot of these folks out there that monetize this stuff. And make no mistake about it, these white nationalists love nothing more than a person of color that will stand on their side so they can then act as if they're fine with, you know, people of other colors and other, other race, creeds, and religions. This is what they use. This is their M.O., to try to act like they're not as bad as you think they are. Make no mistake about it. They are just as bad, if not worse, than the way you think of them. And that's the absolute truth. You know, I can assure you that if these people had the power, if they had the power, they would expel people of color from this country. I mean, come on, Donald Trump tried to ban a religion in the United States of America. Let that sink in. And there is a lot of people in the United States of America that follow the Muslim faith that aren't out there blowing cars up and things like that. But make no mistake about it. They want you to think that that's exactly what those people are. And they mean every one of them. And it couldn't be further from the truth. And that's a fact. Okay. Let's, let's see who we got on here for roll call. Okay, we got uh, Jim Gomez. We have Kat Shepperly. Paula Bradley Davis is on here. Charlene Stout is on here. Kevin Patrick Murphy. Wanda Woy. Uh, we got B. Stephen uh, Filmeyer. Hope I got that right. Raphael Angel is on here. Ricardo Erdaneta is on here. Joan Williamson. Tony Phillips. We got my secret squirrel, David Weaver, on here. Jennifer Peck is on here. Joe Parham from North Kakalaki. What's up, my brother? Christopher Markins is on here. Uh, we got Larry Blatt, my 82nd Airborne brother. Uh, also, APWU 2577, Union Strong. We got Becca Gwynn. And uh, do we have any others that you saw from other countries? I've seen Anna? Australia and Chile. Good, good. 
Well, we we appreciate anybody from from other countries. Uh, I've got quite a few people that follow me on here uh, from from Belgium, from Scotland, uh, and I always appreciate. It. I was looking at Google Earth today. You know, I love Google Earth. I really do. Uh, I'm a huge fan of maps. People that don't know me, I am a huge fan of maps. I have maps that are framed. That's 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 what I'm. I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to maps. And I love Google Earth. I love to be able to go to places that I've been in Europe and kind of, you know, nowadays you can zoom in 3D. You can look at the, you can almost literally walk the paths that you walked when you were there. Uh, you know, it just, I, I love it so much. I just really enjoy it. I, I tell you people, if you ever have the opportunity to travel, you need to do so. And if you ever have the opportunity to travel overseas, that is a must. Uh I don't recommend doing what I did by going over and spending 54 days and just going from place to place because, you know, it, it just, it, you really want to go over there and you want to maybe do two or three countries uh, and spend plenty of time seeing lots of things in those countries. Uh, but like I said, I did the trip that I did and I went back to a lot of places that I went to before. Uh, but yeah, I found some other new spots too, but, uh, yeah, I just love to travel. I love maps. Okay, folks, uh, here, what else? I got a couple other things that, uh, I thought were, were worthy to bring up. Uh, one of them is I recently heard that, uh, there was a train that was destroyed and it was a Russian train that was full of troops and it was destroyed. And they said it had 5,700 Russian troops on it. Uh, and apparently, I think almost all of the people were, were killed. Uh, I think they, they, they highlighted that it was like 300 people that survived it. Uh, they captured three generals from Russia. So, I mean, if that's the case, the numbers will, will show tomorrow. Uh, I still, it amazes me that in this day and age, I never knew that the rail was the main mode of transportation of the military and their equipment for Russia. It amazes me. But now I will tell you that, you know, the rail system in Europe is next level. Nowhere near what we have in the United States of America. The United States of America is literally like in the Stone Age when you're talking about the rail. And over in Europe, rail is everywhere. And they got trains that are absolutely, uh, you know, they go 200 miles an hour. But I'm talking about the rail that's in Russia that isn't as fast as that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I think those numbers are going to show up probably tomorrow. In 2017, Trump discussed using a nuclear weapon on North Korea and then blaming it on someone else. Let that sink in. Understand, folks, that nuclear weapons, you know, th those that have nuclear weapons, they have them, but it's never even wise to rattle that saber because everybody should know that if you use a nuclear weapon, anybody uses a nuclear weapon, it's not going to end that way. You're not going to win a battle that way. The only thing you're going to do is you're going to cause more people to come against you. And that's a fact. If, if Vladimir Putin uses a nuclear weapon in Ukraine, Think about the countries that surround Ukraine and understand that the fallout of a nuclear weapon will absolutely affect them greatly. This is one of the reasons why when Vladimir Putin said that he was willing to use a nuclear weapon, China, China, the, the, the president of China lashed out because make no mistake about it, a nuclear weapon in Ukraine will absolutely cause the you know the the after effects to hit places in in China as well. And if you think that somebody's going to sit back and let that happen and do nothing about it, you're wrong. A nuclear weapon will will bring us to World War III without a doubt and it will either end with Russia being annihilated quickly or it will end with all of us. And, and, and that's that's a scary thing. But the thought that Donald Trump even had that in his mind, you know, we know that he talked about what about a nuclear weapon in a hurricane? You know, Donald Trump doesn't come up with good ideas because he's not a smart person. The new book is called Donald Trump 
versus the United States, and it offers an extensive examination of John Kelly's tenure and life as Trump's chief of staff from July 2017 to 2019. And remember that John Kelly was the retired Marine Corps four-star general that went to work, and of course, General Mattis also come on board. It wasn't very long before General Mattis said, I can't work for this guy. And General Mattis has been very vocal about his thoughts about what a loser Donald Trump was. And of course, John Kelly. John Kelly did what he did in that position as the chief of staff. John Kelly stayed there to try to do everything in his power to protect from things happening that were wrong, just like this to stop somebody like Donald Trump from doing something and even coming up with that idea of let's strike North Korea and then blame it on somebody else. If you can remember, shortly after Trump took office, he started threatening North Korea and calling North Korean leader Rocket Man. It was during this time John Kelly started feeling as if it, that Donald Trump really wanted to go to war. Kelly actually had to explain to Trump why his underhanded plan would not work. And once again, even if even if if Donald Trump launched a nuclear weapon at somebody and he got away with it for a, a, a period of time, eventually the news would surface. And if the news surfaced that the United States of America launched a nuclear weapon and tried to blame it on somebody else, it would make the United States of America, it would place us in the crosshairs of every country on the planet. That's a fact. Kelly said that he brought in top military leaders to explain why attacking North Korea and then trying to blame it on someone else would never work. Then they explained the aftermath on how many would be killed. And John Kelly said the argument about how many people would die due to the nuclear strike had no impact on Donald Trump whatsoever. And that's because Donald Trump is a narcissist. And Donald Trump doesn't look at people the way normal people look at people. Donald Trump looks at people and thinks, what can they do for me? And if they can't do anything for Donald Trump, Donald Trump has no issues with whatever happens to them. He doesn't care about them. And that is absolute fact. But the thought about that, because a nuclear explosion anywhere, if a nuclear explosion hit Seoul, Korea, Seoul, South Korea, millions of people would literally die instantly. If you're talking about major cities in certain locations, millions of people would die. If, if you launched a nuclear weapon at North Korea, understand that the after effects would kill many, many people in South Korea as well. And it also would cross into China. Once again, making China absolutely ready to, to fight anybody that, that pushed that off. So Trump was the president, and the power felt very, very good to him. Trump is a narcissist, and the loss of life other than those close to him doesn't matter, and that's a fact. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, folks, before this is over with, we're going to watch him throw his own children under the bus. Donald Trump will throw his own children under the bus before he goes down. All of this is to try to persuade Trump from moving forward. Failed because after the brief about the amount of death started talking about a preemptive strike. Kelly told Trump he would need approval from Congress, which angered Trump. And you got to think why? Because Trump is a wannabe dictator that believed everything is his and he could do whatever he wants, and he believed that as president, he shouldn't have to ask Congress. But ladies and gentlemen, that's part of the Constitution, folks. Let me tell you something. We have to get permission from Congress before we can strike another country. And then another story that I have is Jack Smith's new subpoenas to former Trump officials have been revealed. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, Jack Smith is requesting more information into the money that was used to pay for things like the January 6th rally and other financial grifts that Trump has used. And I'm going to tell you, folks, this is great. And listen to what I'm saying. 
because a lot of these people that donate to Donald Trump, it's so sad because a lot of them are poor people that don't have that much money, but they think they're doing the right things. But listen to this. If, it isn't just going to go after Trump's Save America PAC, but also Trump's Make America Great Again PAC. That's two. Then you got the Save America Joint Fundraising Committee. That's three. As well as the Trump Make America Great Again Committee, not PAC, but committee. That's four. And then also the Election Defense Fund. There's five, which actually wasn't a real fund at all. It didn't even exist. And when people sent money to that, it automatically went to Donald Trump's bank account. So all of this stuff is going to be brought to the forefront. And we're going to get to see this stuff. And once again, you know, I think about all these people that sent money to Donald Trump and they thought they were doing the right things. Donald Trump took your money. Donald Trump doesn't care about you. In the end, Donald Trump couldn't give two shits about any people that are not multimillionaires and billionaires. Those are the people that Donald Trump respects. Those are the people that Donald Trump likes. And those are the people that Donald Trump likes to be around. Donald Trump does not like 99% of his supporters because in actuality, he thinks he's above them and they are beneath him. And that's a fact. So the money... From that, never went to his defense, but actually went directly to his pocket. So some of this money may have also went into pockets of those who may be thought to have been ta uh, targeted by the feds in order to keep them quiet. So let that sink in. They're looking at the opportunity that Donald Trump may have taken to take money and bribe people to basically keep their mouths shut. So I'm going to tell you this. Jack Smith is on it. He's on the case. And I'm going to tell you, I think it's all but done. I think that we're going to see indictments. I think that we're going to finally see a president go to prison. And as many times as I said, I don't think we're going to see him go to prison. I think that there's a possibility that maybe he will, and maybe he has to for our democracy to exist. And that's a fact. And we can talk about all the stuff that's going on right now with the House members, the Republican House members, and the and the underhanded tactics they're trying to do to make sure that they can try to stop their people from being investigated. And 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 as they get caught doing that, just know that they don't have a problem with other people, average citizens going to prison. They just don't want themselves to be held accountable for the crimes that they've committed while they've been in office. And it absolutely has to happen. Okay, so with that being said, what do you think, Anna? I'm uh, looking forward to see what, if there's anything that Jack Smith has that hasn't been released or hasn't, uh, has been kept on the down low. It would be really interesting to see if there was, was stuff even like that the uh, January 6th committee had that just wasn't put out in the public. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think that they have, they have millions of documents mm -hmm. and they've got phone records of all kinds of people. And, you know, these people that have been, you know, subpoenaed, uh, Lindsey Graham, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm waiting to see, you know, if any crimes are going to be tied directly to them. And then, you know, once again, I, I think that the enablers that enabled Donald Trump to do what he did, uh, I think they need to go. And that's and that's one of the scary reasons why the Republicans right now are trying to get oversight of the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. They want to get oversight over the Department of Justice so they can stop investigations into them. They can stop investigations into Marge the Trainwreck Green and, and Rick Perry uh, uh, or, and, and these jackaloons. And I'm telling Scott Perry, I believe this. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's, it's absolutely horrific. All right, what kind of, uh, we got some memes, right? We have some memes. Let's bring them up. Hunter's Laptop! Hunter's Laptop! Okay, this one here. We found out that Clarence Thomas was communicating with his wife, pro-insurrection wife, the whole time. He knew about her text messages calling on lawmakers to overturn the election for Trump, and then he ruled over cases regarding the 2020 election. It doesn't get any more corrupt than that. Folks, I'm telling you right now, if the Republicans are okay with this, 
That tells you everything you need to know about the Republican Party. Every member of Congress should be doing everything in their power to impeach this guy right here. Without a doubt, without a doubt, this guy right here should be impeached. And, and once again, we know the majority of people now feel that the Supreme Court is completely partisan. And that is not where it's supposed to be. What that means is that these people have failed. They have failed miserably. This is an underhanded, crooked judge, and he should be held accountable for what he's done. He should be removed from office. And if the Republicans had any spine whatsoever and they cared about justice, they would absolutely be doing everything in their power to remove him. All right. I know we got a couple more. What else? Today, Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisselberg is being sentenced to five months in jail. On a five-month sentence, he'll serve approximately 100 days. As a public defender in Manhattan, I represented a man who was sentenced to three to six years for stealing a jacket. And this is what I kind of hit on yesterday, is the, the double standard that we have, that the filthy rich and those that protect the filthy rich, which is what this jackaloon did, for, for 50 years, gets a slap on the wrist. I hope this guy gets his ass handed to him. I hope he gets his ass whipped in the shower. Rikers Island is no joke. Them 100 days could be rough as hell for him, but he deserves it. He deserves it. It's absolutely sad. All right, what's the next one? Okay, next time you hear Republicans bitch about the border problem, remind them they're the problem. Now, look at this. This was a border funding bill. And look at that. Look at that. The Republicans, 191 Republicans, voted against it. 100, 191 Republicans. Yeah, let that sink in. You know, these people scream about the border. You know, and I'm going to tell you this, folks. First and foremost, you got to understand. Do you think rich corporations really want the border to be shut down completely? If you don't realize that migrant workers... On those farms in Texas and Arizona, New Mexico and California, if you think for one second that those farms do not rely on migrant worker, you are misinformed. You don't know what you're talking about. Everybody wants to scream about the immigrants at the border. But make no mistake about it, they need those immigrant workers because guess what? Those immigrants will do work that most people in America are too lazy to do, and it's absolutely spot on. And you can guarantee I'm telling the truth. Okay, we got any hate mail? We do. We do have some hate mail. Awesome. But I didn't win the election. I lost bigly. Okay, let me see here. Okay, what does the Republican Party do when they find out George Santos has lied about everything to get elected? They gut the ethics committee. They aren't mad at Santos for lying. They're mad that he got caught. And this person said, shouldn't you be talking about uh, found documents? I know how they could. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. The big difference between documents with Trump and documents with Joe Biden. When documents were found in the office that Joe Biden used to use when he was a vice president, as soon as they found those out, by President Biden went ahead and contacted the Department of Justice so they could go ahead and conduct an investigation. That's a big difference from Donald Trump hiding, stealing documents, number one, stealing documents. Donald Trump specifically had documents put in boxes and then had them loaded up on a truck and transported down to Mar-a-Lago without permission. He stole the documents. Then he tried to hide the documents. Then he lied about the documents. And then the feds showed up and found the documents. Then more documents were found. And once again, now they got on video where Trump had a guy moving documents at Mar-a-Lago go from point A to point B to keep them from being found. So there's a big difference. There's a big difference between the two. And make no mistake about it, President Biden is saying, they're, they're, you do the investigation. Because President Biden knows it wasn't him. He didn't have his hands on those things. It might have been somebody else. But make no mistake about it, they will get to the bottom of it. And I can tell you that President Biden did exactly what he was supposed to do, is alert the federal authorities about the documents so they can do an investigation. They can make sure that the documents go back to NARA. And that's the way it is. So that's it. And and as far as somebody saying Biden lies daily. Yeah, you're a Trump supporter. 
You have no concept what lying even means. And that's a fact. All right, anything else? Or is that it? That was it for our hate mail. Okay, well, that's outstanding. Well, folks, we've been on here for 30 minutes. And uh, I, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, and I, I appreciate a lot of you all who keep sending me messages about you like the format that we're using. You know, we're just trying to make this into more of a of a show, talk about the issues uh, in, in, in the hopes that you guys like it, we'll share it. You know, we're trying to get things set so that we can be picked up on, uh, you know, like like on an actual uh, a channel. Uh, and it, it, once again, it doesn't mean we're going to stop doing this. We're always going to do the social media part. But, you know, we're just trying to make our audience. We want to expand our audience. We want to be able to extend our reach to people across the country and across the world uh, to talk about the truth of what's going on. So, uh, yeah, folks, I hope to see you guys here tomorrow. Be good to each other. Sappers clear the way. Airborne all the way. Eyes right.